Hi, this is Larry Puckett. Today I want to continue with our exploration of the various programming uh, panes in Decoder Pro uh, that are avail available to you as part of programming a new locomotive and creating a new locomotive. So before we begin though, I want to point out a couple of things here on the main page. You can see it says the active profile is the Piedmont Southern, my railroad. You can see programmer status here is idle. So we're in idle mode. It's not sending any commands, uh, any reads or writes to a decoder. Okay. Over here on the left, we have these two green uh, statements. Service mode programmer is online and ops mode programmer is online. Now these, notice they're green here. If those were red, that would be an indication that there's a problem in one or the other of them. Now, with the DCS240, which is the Digitrax unit I'm using with this, um, service mode and ops mode are both available all the time. With a Sprog programmer, though, um, only one is available at a time. So what the service mode programmer might be online and the ops mode programmer offline. Now, if you have a unit that um, a command station that does support both modes at the same time, and one of them comes up red or they both come up red, then that's an indicator that something is wrong with your interface or with your connection uh, or the something on the, on, on the unit that you're working with. And you need to go back and check your preferences and check your settings and your hardware and make sure everything is, is working correct. You might actually need to restart the program again just to make sure everything's working correctly. That's just a little tip to get you started. Uh, also notice that I have switched now. We tried the programming track mode. We tried programming on the main. Now let's switch down to edit only and I'll show you what that looks like when we're programming something. Um, I've already set it up direct byte. So let's go ahead and hit the test FT edit only and we're going to program. So let's get that started. Okay. Uh, good, it came up and fit in the screen for a change. Okay, this is the same one that I previously have been working with. So let's go ahead and move right in to the next pane. That's the headlights or the lights in general. So let's talk about uh, the lighting effects because these, there are a lot of different effects available in most decoders nowadays. Um, this is the soundtracks selection. Uh, point out that this will be a little bit different with each manufacturer's decoders because they they offer different effects and different capabilities. Also, the layout of this might be a little different uh, amongst the different decoders because the people that write these programs and that, that develop these panes um, are different in most cases. There might be, you know, someone who is working with a couple of different manufacturers, decoders, and somebody else that's only working with Digitrack, say, and another guy that's working with uh, Loke Sound, uh, etc. One working with TCS. They might all be different, and they all come at it with a slightly different approach. So expect a little bit of differences amongst these, but um, they're all the basically the same thing there. Okay, let's real quick look at this. Now, in the economy decoders, uh, there's only four wired effects available. The headlight, F0 forward and F0 reverse, and then FX3 and FX4. Uh, with some of the others, I think they go up to six wired effects. But with the economy, this is what you're going to be working with here. Right off then, let's take a look at, at the what's available for your headlight selection. As you can see, there's quite a number of, of different ones available. Anywhere from a simple on-off, a dimmable headlight, different Mars lights and gyro lights, etc., ditch lights, you name it, firebox flicker, all kinds of, of interesting effects that you can work with in your locomotives. Uh, I'm going to stick with my dimmable headlight selection here. Okay, the next thing then, um, let's wait on this a minute on the phasing. Just leave them the way they are. The other thing here that I want to shoot, uh, touch on is the uh, grade crossing logic. It's disabled in this case. You can enable it. And by enabling it, this allows the headlight to respond to the grade crossing signal uh, horn when you, when you blow it on your uh, throttle. Uh, what this allows you to do is set up a, uh, a, a, a light, a headlight, for example, that say might dim or flash. You might use a, a Mars light in this case. 
and set it up for the grade crossing logic so that anytime you press the grade crossing horn or, or, or whistle signal on your locomotive, it would initiate the grade crossing logic and that Mars light might flash or the headlight might dim or, or whatever uh, you set it up for. Okay, So that's how you, that one part of setting up the grade logic, or grade crossing logic. Uh, you can see that's covered under CV49, so you can look up CV49 in the uh, Soundtrack's user's guide or technical manual and, uh, and get some more information on how this is fully implemented. Uh, the headlight type. Okay, You can either select an LED or an incandescent light bulb. Okay, um, Why is this available like this? Well, light bulbs are voltage driven, LEDs are current driven. So by selecting one or the other, it allows you to set up the decoder to supply the correct amount of current or voltage to the light, okay, or to the bulb or LED that's, that's installed in your locomotive. So it's important to do this. Um, directional control, you can have forward and reverse directional control set up on your, uh, on your decoder and in your headlights and it's a simple checkbox to turn those on and off. And again, if you look real quick, that's controlled by CV57. Very easy to look that up. Down here, you might this might be your forward headlight, this is your reverse headlight, so you can set that up the same way as above. Now let's say you you're, uh, want to have ditch lights on your, the front of your locomotive. Okay, so you would go down and you can click the different ditch lights, like a Type 1 or a Type 2 ditch lights. Type 1 and Type 2 describes how the ditch lights work after they finish flashing. Okay? Some of them stay on, some of them turn off. So you need to understand what type of ditch light system your railroad uses, or you decide to use, on your railroad anyway, uh, when you set this up. Now, here's where the phasing comes in. Let's say you have both of these set up to control the left and right ditch light. Okay, type 1 ditch lights. And you've got this one set up for phase A, and this one set up for phase B. And what that does then is it turns them off in alternate sequence, on and off. So that you know you, your left and right ditch lights are, are going on and off uh, together or in, in sequence. And that's controlled by which phase, A or B, they are set for. If you set them both for A, they're going to both flash at the same time instead of alternating amongst each other. Everything else is pretty much the same as I showed you for the headlight here. Now let's go down real quick and take a look at this. You can control the hyper rate flashlight using this CV. Um, it says 0 is fast, 15 is slow. Pretty straightforward for the flashing. That would be for something like the flash rate for your, um, for your Mars light, say. Okay? And here's the grade crossing hold time. So that once you hit that um, grade crossing uh, signal and blow the horn or whatever, the bell, or the whistle, excuse me, um, this will control how long the lighting effect continues to operate. So if you've got a Mars light, it's not going to stay on forever. It's just going to flash for a certain amount of time. And it's described in s how you set the time in seconds that an effect stays active after the horn button is released. Okay? Pretty straightforward on that one, and a, a nice effect to be able to control. Um, the dimmer level, let's go to this one first. This controls what you might dim the headlight to. I've set this one above, if I remember correctly, for a dimmable headlight. So if you hit F7 on your throttle, um, it's going to dim the headlight, and the amount of dimming is controlled by this variable here. So at 153 out of 255, you're looking at about 60% of full brightness here. Uh, now what about brightness level 1 and 2? Well, one option on these various lighting effects is on-off with brightness 1 or brightness 2. So if you select this, then you can control how bright that lighting effect is uh, by simply moving this little slider right here. And that will control how bright the dimmed function is on this particular light. So you can have two different uh, lights that are dimmed to different degrees. Pretty straightforward on that one, I guess. Um, 
Okay, that's pretty much all there is to the lighting effects. Like I said, on some of these others there will be more, and uh, there might be more effects. I can't remember on the Tsunami 2 uh, that what the effects are available, but there will just be more, potentially more effects available to you, and probably more um, wired effects. Okay, let's go in and move forward real quickly for a couple more of these. The analog controls, this controls how things perform. Um, if you place your decoder equipped locomotive on a DC track and it is set for dual mode or analog conversion, whatever you want to call that, DC conversion enabled. In this case, it's disabled, so nothing's going to happen. But you can set the analog motor start voltage. 7 volts is typical. Uh, you can determine the analog power supply, whether it's available or not. And you could have it set for no power source available and turn it off basically. Another thing here, this controls which functions operate in uh, analog mode. So the headlights forward and reverse would be on and could function depending on how you've got them set in your programming. So all of these things are something that you can work with uh, in the analog mode.